Hello, lovely listener. I'm your host, Lindsay, and you're listening to Two Cents Podcast, your Audible anthology. This episode, I'll be unpacking a few poems I got inspired by this past week, as well as my experience in attempting to write a poem every day. In Julie fashion, cue the intro. This episode is laying the foundation for what I'd like to use the podcast for. Sharing, discussing, and enjoying poetry and other literary works. In the hopes that you, as a listener, can be inspired or even celebrated for your work. Speaking of which, I hope you've had a look at the poem of the week that I post on the homepage. How I went about getting poems was pretty random. I decided that the first poem would be by a celebrated writer and the other I'd scout for. So, in all randomness, I took my hard copy anthology and opened it to accept whatever piece I saw. And while this is probably going to be the last time I do this, I was quite pleased with what I found. Mutability by Percy Bysshe Shelley. Mourn him later. With the first poem down, I went about scouting for the next one, and I revisited an app I once had called Poetizer. Poetizer is an app where poetry lovers and writers can come together and support each other's work. I'd love to give a full review on my experiences with the app, so that will probably be another episode. On the app's interface is a page for popular poems, which I scoured and commented on, asking the various poets if I could feature their work in an episode. In the end, I got two responses, and I will be sharing one poem in this episode by Ghanaian writer Sela King or King Sela. Equipped with three years of writing experience, In Bed, On My Way is a somber piece that, in the words of the writer, narrates the experience of a dying mother suffering from an illness of which her recovery isn't possible. She is trying to spew her last words before her demise. I will read it to you now. In bed, on my way. The morning taste good, with sun rays on my lips. A fame, a pain, I lay on the moon, with bruises from yesterday. I'm possessed with tears, clouded with fear. I'm alive to be tormented by these demons. Water, food, shelter. After me, skelter. Attempt and tempt, exempt and kempt. Death, breath farer and farer from my decaying body. Mixed with rust, stones and cracks, remains of my youth, life farer and farer from my reach each day. The days are no alien, my son, my daughter. Let this last smile from my heart escort me away. Much applause and thanks to Sela King for allowing me to share this beautiful piece. The poem narrates the stages of the woman's death, her breath getting further and further away from her, then her life, the remains of her youth, getting further and further as well, and then ending with her last smile. It makes me wonder how this gradual shutdown of her body feels because it's not an abrupt end. The writer describes their connection to the poem as a comment on how short and unpleasant or unpredictable life can be. Which introduces the next piece I mentioned before by Shelley, titled Mutability. Before I read it, I am going to define the word mutability because it helped me get the idea of the poem and subsequently the tone. Mutability is defined as the state of being changeable, something that is inclined to change, evolve, 
or mutate. And in context of the poem, the speaker is referring to life. The poem reads, The flower that smiles today, tomorrow dies. All that we wish to stay, tempts, then flies. What is this world's delight? Lightning that mocks the night, brief, even as bright. Virtue, how frail it is. Friendship, how rare. Love, how it sells poor bliss for proud despair. But we, though soon they fall, survive their joy and all, which ours we call. Whilst skies are blue and bright, whilst flowers are gay, whilst eyes that change ere night make glad the day. Whilst yet the calm hours creep, dream thou and from thy sleep, then wake to weep. Percy Bysshe Shelley was a prolific romantic poet, although he only got credit in his later years and generations after his death. To sum him up, because I'm still reading about him, I'd say he was an ideological rebel. Remember, the Romantic era was characterized by its emphasis on the individual, and Shelley would go out of his way to challenge institutions. He was a proponent for what he called free love, defying the institution of marriage. He often challenged organized religion and was a staunch atheist, and he inspired many pioneers with his work, from Mahatma Gandhi all the way to Karl Marx. Fun fact, his wife Mary Shelley is the author of Frankenstein, the story about a scientist who brought a creature to life through quote-unquote unorthodox means. Now, Mutability is one of two poems. The first one was published in 1816 and has been widely analysed. Half of it was featured in Frankenstein and said by Frankenstein himself. This version also talks about life and how ephemeral it can be. However, we are analysing the one I've just recited, which was published years later in 1824. If I were to quickly sum up the heart of mutability, I'd say, all we know is fleeting. Now we begin in stanza one. And in the first four lines, the speaker talks about the impermanence of things, here today and gone tomorrow. This rings somewhat ecclesiastical to me, referring to biblical literature as seen in the book of Ecclesiastes where the speaker repeats that everything is meaningless, a chasing after the wind. So, the speaker has just listed how everything is impermanent. Then the fifth line asks, what is this world's delight? Truly, if everything is impermanent, what then is the world's delight? The speaker introduces the image of lightning that mocks the night both brief and bright, in a way answering their question. Nothing. The world has no fixed delight. So I think. In the next stanza, the speaker elaborates on the flawsomeness of human nature in lines one to four. They're being honest. Love and friendship are beautiful things that we inherently struggle to maintain. Yet, Lines 5 to 8 bring a twist to our predicament. Regardless of our struggles, we survive. And our struggles don't disqualify us from being worthy of love and friendship, as well as having virtue. Line 8 says, which hours we call. This is referring to love, friendship and all those things that we are worthy of, but we must seek to project it first, rather than feeding off the fact that we're worthy of it. The last stanza pierces the warmth of the previous lines by saying, 
Despite the beauty and joy of relationships, the blue skies, pretty flowers and relaxing sleep, you wake from your dream and slumber and weep. This could refer to an awakening to the reality of things, how they can change and are thus mutable. Changing sometimes with you, but most of the time without you. This concludes the jaded confession of the speaker. Pretty heavy stuff. Now I will let you in on my daily poetry challenge. I initiated it to start writing more and try different styles and subject matter. For one, I faltered with the daily part because I skipped some days and most of them still feel a bit incomplete or they could be better. Regardless of these setbacks, I have come with a piece. I wrote it quite a while back in one sitting and I think it's a bit melodramatic considering what inspired it. So I wrote it after coming back from the dentist where I swallowed something I was meant to rinse out. That resulted in me feeling a bit off balance and very weak. I don't want to say any more, otherwise I'll just be recycling the poem, so here it goes. I visited the dentist this day and without instruction, swallowed a dilute fluoride varnish. So I think, I googled it. I washed it down, more, 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 to the assistant's disbelief. I don't think the dentist saw me. There I sat, wondering if I did something wrong. Alas, I shrugged it off. Now, I sit on my bed, drowsy and numb, clean teeth and gums, hot feet and a pulsing head. Though the feeling is perplexing, no tears are shed. I am about to sleep, and in my fore and background thoughts, I wonder if I'll be found dead. I often hyperbolize sensations that bring me discomfort, likening them to my demise so that I'm aware, with open eyes, to pay close attention of my assumed end. How'd the sun look this day? A golden sunset, as always. How'd you feel this day? All right, just okay. What were the plans for after this day? Many, I can't say. I guess I'll just have to put them away. Like a child on a Sunday, putting away a plaything, hoping to get back to it tomorrow. But it will be Monday, and it may not happen. And there it is. I think most parts of it are self-explanatory, but if you'd like to read it and have a look at the structure, I've posted it on my Instagram at 2 pnf. While this isn't the only poem I wrote over the past few days, I chose it because it suits the theme of life and death. We have Sela King's poem detailing a woman's demise, Shelley's bleak display of reality, and my personal experience regarding the possible end of my life, and the lack of guarantee there is for another day. What does one make out of all of this? I'd say a variety of things. Maybe gratitude for the present and or sobering acknowledgement of how this life works. That brings us to the end of this episode. Thank you for listening. I appreciate you giving your time. If this is your first listen, I hope this was impressionable enough for you to join me again. And if you're returning, your loyalty is unmatched and received with so much gratitude. As always, my email is open for any further discussion on a topic, episode suggestions, and even submissions. If you'd like more, you can check out the mini blog post where I discuss the episode's cover art, 
and please give the YouTube channel a subscribe and the podcast's Instagram a follow. Till next time. <laughs>